Hi, Miss Timberge here. Um, I'm the art teacher at both uh, Wakazoo and Lakewood Elementary. Today we are going to be talking about Dutch architecture and creating drawings or you can create a collage or a small city um, of Dutch homes that have different types of Dutch gables on them. As you saw in the video and the PowerPoint that you watched before this, um, there are about five different types of Dutch gables. There is the bell gable, there is the spout gable, the, um, that's the adorned bell gable, so it's more decorative than the basic bell gable. And we have the triangular gable, the step gable, and the neck gable, and the spout, I think I said the spout earlier. Um, so today I'm gonna to be demonstrating for you guys how to create a Dutch style home drawing. You can use long, narrow pieces. I think this is about six by 12 inch um, brown construction paper, but you could use gray, you could use tan, and you can just use white if you'd like. Um, use whatever you have available. Uh, you, If you don't have long, big pieces of paper like this um, that you can uh, use you can use any size paper and you can make your buildings any size you'd like you can also make singular buildings like this or you can make a row of them on, and make multiple buildings on a drawing um, to make it look like a small little um, area on a canal in Amsterdam so to start find a pencil paper and uh, if you have a black marker or any type of marker on hand or any kind of coloring tools. Um, like I said, use whatever you have on hand and let's start drawing. All right, so the first thing we're gonna be starting with today is a ruler. Um, whenever drawing any kind of architecture, the most important tool of an architect would be your ruler. And we're gonna start off with a pencil so that way if we make any mistakes or we wanna change something, we can easily erase it. On my long piece of paper, or if you're going to work on a piece of paper that's even just like printer paper like this you could do this and make smaller versions of what i'm about to show you right now and you could even repeat them over and over again to make it look like a city on a canal um i'm going to be starting off with on each side of my longer paper a straight line i'm going to make these buildings nice and tall I'm making this building tall and skinny um, like you've seen in the video and also the photographs of the different Dutch um, homes in Amsterdam that you saw in the Google slide and also in the video. Now I want to kind of stop right at the same spot here because now I'm going to be thinking about what type of gable I'd like to use. Um, on the handout that's connected to the lesson, um, you see all these different types of gables. There's a couple ways that you could draw this on here. If you were able to print this off, you could actually cut these out and you could um, use it as a stencil, lay it on top of your paper and trace it. I am going to do it the way that I think most of you might need to do it, which is looking at the image, looking at the shapes um, of the gable and drawing what I see. A lot, you know, a, 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 it's kind of exactly like when we do drawing from observations. We're looking for the shapes and going from there. So I'm gonna start by coming in on each side of my Dutch house right here. You can see those little lips. As you can see, I'm choosing to do the uh, bell gable. And then I see this art shape. Now this is gonna be the hard part is trying to get it to go um, symmetrical. So I'm gonna try and do my best to arch it. Whoa, notice I'm doing a couple different arches and finding which one I think looks best to match the one on the other side. So this is when you should always draw lightly to get the arches that you wish to have matching on each side. And then you're gonna also bring that arch up. And then I'm gonna bring the side up. Notice how I keep bouncing back and forth to each side because I want it to be symmetrical. And obviously I am not perfect. I am not a robot. I am not a machine. So this is going to take a little bit of time and problem solving. So once I get my bell shape here, I'm going to um, draw a straight line, or if you really want it to be nice and neat, you're going to want to use a ruler to draw any of your straight lines. And then I can go and tweak any areas I think that look quite different than my other side here. I notice this is up a little bit higher, so I might move this up and then erase what I did there. So I'm just kind of looking back and forth, seeing what I can do to make it look more symmetrical. 
once I have, I feel good about the top part of my architectural gable style roof, I'm ready to move on to some details. Now, because I'm doing the bell gable, an option is, is I could do it more like an adorned bell gable. And notice the adorned bell gable has decorative um, different designs and curves and swirls on the edges here and here. And I could do things like that if I want to make it a little bit more detailed. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add some of those things. I'm going to add what looks like a big spiral here. And making the same thing on the other side. Um, I'm going to make a rooftop here where I'm going to have it come out a little bit on the sides here. And I'm going to make a skinny rectangle and then add another rectangle on top of that that's slightly bigger. I'm going to make a decorative center and maybe even continue that down below. And this might be where that hook comes down um, on the top of the buildings where they used the hooks they used to bring up large pieces of furniture because of such narrow stairways inside of the building. Um, looking for some other fun details I can draw and add to this. Maybe I'll even add a second layer to the side of my bell gable. And now I'm going to start thinking about my windows, like what is that going to look like? So I'm going to start by giving some dividing lines um, onto my building. I might even add a couple more details down here on the sides, maybe even connecting those. And I might this might be when I want to start bringing in my ruler. Notice everything is not perfect because I'm not a machine. Once again, I'm not a robot but I can make it look like a little bit more symmetrical by doing different details. Um, and then I wanna go in and I'm gonna add a second line below that for my um, sections. And you'll notice on a lot of these buildings, um, they are kind of split up into different sections and they have multiple windows on each of those sections. So I'm gonna go down and continue on with my sections. And this will also help me decipher where my windows are going to go. And maybe I'll have a step up here at the side where you walk up to what looks like a little um, cement pad where maybe you have where you enter the door and maybe my door will be right in here. make it a double door make my fun unique candles there and then move on up here to adding some windows and if you really want to make these look more detailed you can um, add window sills you could add window flower boxes doing some of those de decorative dividers inside of the windows. And I can divide them this way. Again, and see how I continue that line stopping at all of the dividing marks. And one more right 
over here. So there's that. I could even go and make a window casing around all of those windows or make some more dividing lines that go vertical. And I would continue to add my details, also putting some different dividing lines or uh, a casing around my door. And also, after you're done drawing all your windows and doors and <clears throat> details, you want to go and think about different textures and details that you may want to add on some of the dividing lines, if there's textures, or whether or not it is um, brick, you could add what looks like bricks. In the video, it talked about how most of these homes I think after the 1600s were um, mostly built from brick and not from wood panels anymore because they found they had a problem with a lot of fires. Um, but you could also, you know, go around the door, maybe add some stone. This is more of a home I'm doing. If you wanted to make it look more like a store or a shop or a cafe, you could make a little awning on top, a half circle, and put a name of that store or cafe. So this is kind of giving you a couple of different examples of how I've also done like a half stone texture and half brick texture. Um, notice the next step was to uh, trace and Sharpie. And I'm going to take my little tulip cafe here that I made a while back and I'm going to take my black sharpie um, and if you don't have a black marker you could use any colored dark um, dark colored marker you have around and just go and trace over those pencil lines that you've created and um, any lines you don't want to keep you could always outline everything you do want to keep and then erase any pencil lines that are still showing in the end you can see all the fun details I did little flower um, boxes underneath this window. I like the diagonal lattice um, that I uh, drew. I drew diagonal lines in this direction. And then I drew diagonal lines in the opposite direction. It gave the window dividers a really cool look, I think. Um, adding a sign on yours, you can make it a store, a cafe. Um, this is that awning that I was talking about, that half circle awning looks kind of like a little covered umbrella area. Um, designing the doors the way you want them to look. Now the cool part is, boys and girls, is if you make multiples of these, you can actually line them up in a row and collage them onto a larger piece of paper together to make what looks like a little town. Like you see here, I kind of put them all together. Or if you have a piece of paper like this you could draw multiple houses with different um, style of gables along the tops of each of the houses and make a small one picture that's smaller you could even draw a canal you could draw the houses lined you could do a beautiful sky um, it's totally up to you I've also if you noticed in the video that you watched um, he made a uh, version of one of these but he did it on cardboard and he was actually able to put a real hook and that's what he showed the example of the different types of furniture and things being lifted up um, up to the taller top floors of these buildings. Usually these buildings have anywhere from four to five to six um, stories to them. Anyways, I hope you have fun creating these. Um, please post pictures and um, our Woe uh, our Woe L art page, which is at the link at the bottom of the lesson. If you go to the link at the bottom of the lesson, Woe L Art, you can go in there and you can ask your parents to post a picture of what you've created with a hashtag Woe L Art. Um, so that was hashtag Woe L Art. Boys and girls, I hope you enjoy making your Dutch architecture and Dutch buildings today and exploring different types of gables. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.